Hello and welcome to Let's Make Tracks episode 7. This is my official entry into the Hornby Diorama Challenge 2023. Um, if you want to see particular specifications, specifications? specifics for the build, uh, you have my other videos for reference. Um, there's my visit to the Spa Valley Railway with Lady Red. That was good for inspiration. Oh, there's a few um, continuity errors here and there. I apologise. But um, as long as we stick to the script here, then uh, everything should be fine. Wait, press the... Um... No, no, it's the button just at the top. It was a warm summer's day. It was raining! On, on the layout, babe, I know... Don't worry. The kids were off doing their own thing for the weekend. So me and the other half, whom I've nicknamed Lady Red, had a rare opportunity to spend some time together. Yay! So we jumped in the car and went for a drive around Kent to see what we could find. During our day trip, we stumbled across an old railway line. It seemed to be in pretty good condition compared to what you would see commuting to work, with old-fashioned posters and a sign that read Spa Valley Heritage Railway. Having loved trains since my youth, we decided to explore the site. <laughs> no, we decided to see it, dear, remember? You were driving, had no choice. Moving on. The railway is a preservation project of an old LBSC line that used to run all the way from London down to the south coast carrying express trains, freight and no doubt military cargo and soldiers during the war. Uh -huh. Boom, boom. The line had closed in the late 80s under BR as re-signalling work would have been too costly. Jesus. Both the up and the down lines had been relayed to run historic locomotives and rolling stock for paying visitors. There are plans to further extend the line with the preservation group also looking to increase the collection of rolling stock and locomotives they have on site. Luck was on our side. Okay. Luck was on our side as the famous visitor was running the trains today. Huh? Can. <laughs> How can what? How can a train run trains? You what? How can a train? Run trains. It's a train. It, it's a locomotive. That's a train. The, the train is the whole thing. Train. It's a train. No, 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 no. The locomotive goes at the front or the back, whatever, and it's part of the train. So then how can a train run trains? It's, it's not a train, it's a locomotive that's running the trains. Now, you just said train is running trains. No, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't say the train was running trains. You said the train was running trains. Train cannot run trains. I said a famous visitor was running the trains today. I didn't say a train was running the train. Mm -hmm. Famous visitor is a flying Scotsman, which is a yeah. train. It's a locomotive. How can a train run trains? It's a locomotive. Shh. The Flying Scotsman is a locomotive. There was a train called the Flying Scotsman, 10.30 every morning out of King's Cross, and there was the locomotive, the Flying Scotsman, that is a locomotive. It's a train. Whatever. Train can't run trains. <sighs> we'll talk later. 
Okay. Famous visitor, locomotive, was running the trains that day. The legendary A1 Pacific Flying Scotsman. Herself taking a trip down south for the summer season. Tickets were of course sold out long in advance, so unfortunately no ride for us today. For you. You would have come, I wouldn't have left you on the platform. They serve food as well, you know. I can't flip and eat it. It's not my fault you're lactose intolerant. <gasps> you could have had the bread. No. You love bread. <sighs> can't take you anywhere. The Star Locomotive attracted several famous faces to the line, as I'm pretty sure I spotted some well-known people from the railway community waiting to board 4472's train. You called it a train? Board the train. The car... Whatever. <sighs> waiting to board 4472's train, Jennifer E. Kirk, well known for her appearance on the Great Model Railway Challenge... And also, as luck would have it, Kathy Millett, the judge from the same show. Both ladies regularly produce content on YouTube for model railways. At the end of the platform by the footbridge was Richard Watson, former associate editor for Hornby magazine and himself also a prominent YouTuber with his channel and model railway New Junction. Laffy doggy. They must do the uh, Yes, and of course Lulu. Boop the snoot. Boop the snoot. Boop the snoot. And I can't be 100% certain, but I could have sworn I saw a certain old reverend responsible for a series of railway storybooks that have inspired generations, myself included. He was talking with a driver and fireman, possibly for a new book. All I can say is the conversation was quite passionate and the term Rule 55 was used several times. He likes to use real world scenarios in his stories, so I will have to Google Rule 55 when I get a chance to see what all the fuss was about. God did not bless me with good enough. Spa Valley Station itself is a beautiful example of restoration. The building itself narrowly avoided demolition to make way for a supermarket development. It's next door! <laughs> yes, they had to build it next door. <laughs> Luckily, the Victorian engine shed gained grade listed status just in time to prevent redevelopment of the site, allowing the preservation group to start work on reopening the station as a tourist attraction. There had been a platform free in the station's heyday but the last train had long since departed and a car park now occupies the empty bay platform. Over on platform one, the railway has provided visitor access to the engine shed. This is quite rare to be able to see inside a working shed, so naturally we had to take a look inside. Dusty. Yes, the atmosphere was a little dusty, with a hint of engine oil in the air. Yes. There was elements of rust, yes. Oh, smells. Yes, dust can smell a bit old. Babe, I really need to stick to the scripts. Like, we're really going off on a tangent here. Me. But I can honestly say I've never seen anything as close to a real locomotive works, even if the shed staff numbers were a little thin. The staff I did spot were all working on an old steam boiler. I can only assume they were this... nicking it. They were not nicking it. Because they have it. Do they? Yes. <laughs> yes, they have it. It's there in the picture. Can you not see? No. Do you see? What? That's a picture. Oh, gone now. That is a picture of our glorious day out. A wet day out. Yes, the wet day out that took place on the glorious sunny, sunny day, yes. In the rain. 
babe, we've been over this. <laughs> it, the weather might not have been great while we were there, but for the purposes of this story, it was a beautiful summer's day. Okay, it was a beautiful wet summer's day. Close enough. They were not licking it. <laughs> I've lost my place in the script entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Completely thrown me off. The staff I did spot were all working on an old steam boiler. I can only assume <laughs> this is their current long-term project and we shall have to return to see the complete locomotive once restored. I think her may have been a little overexcited pointing out all the parts, pieces and other equipment in the engine shed as Lady Red's responses to my comments were getting shorter and shorter. Let my patience. As the evening drew in and the light faded, it was time to leave. We had evidently lost track of time. So much time had passed. I aged two years. <laughs> two years? That's a bit extreme. Two years of my life. We weren't there that long. Flashed before my eyes. And a puff of smoke. See, you're getting into it. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's meh hair. That's the electric one. Close enough. The steam train goes doot doot. <laughs> It got to do diesel go. <laughs> exactly. Meh. <laughs> Not meh. Meh. <laughs> they prefer the toot toot. Yeah, she likes the toot toot. It rhymes it with the snoot. The light was fading. The light was fading. <laughs> <laughs> the light is fading. Just think. None of this would be possible without the army of volunteers who continue to give up their time for free to keep these marvellous machines running long after British Rail discarded them and the branch lines that make up our heritage railways. Oh, the kids been away for the weekend. That was more fortuitous circumstance. Who are you? You were quite happy to get in the car. I didn't know where we were going. That was the adventure. You tricked me. <laughs> I didn't trick you. Okay, okay. Next time, I'll take you to a zoo. Yeah. So you can see lots of floof. Lots of floof. Fluffy furry souls, danger noodles, mini dinosaurs, loofy boots and snoops. So many. Okay, deal. Love you, baby. Love you too. Hey Google, what's the difference between a locomotive and a train? According to Model Train Stuff blog, put simply, a locomotive is what provides power to allow the train to move. I knew it. Hey Google, what is Boop the Snoot? According to Facebook, poking an adorable nose while saying Boop. Mm -hmm. Hey Google, what's Railway Rule 55? According to Wikipedia, Rule 55 was an operating rule which applied on British railways in the 19th and 20th centuries. Okay, but why did it annoy Wilbur? <laughs>